This is It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. Thanks for joining me. Right about now, Americans are preparing to celebrate a national holiday. For many people, it's the best time of the year. Thanksgiving, family, sometimes travel, always food. And a time for us to reflect on just how good God has been to us. It's not unusual for people around the table at Thanksgiving dinner to recite what they are thankful for from the previous year. Well, this year, every year, truthfully, I'll be thankful for, among other things, the Bible, God's book, God's revelation to us of himself and his love for a sinful world. The Bible contains the story of the plan of salvation, how Jesus came from heaven to earth to die so that we might live. That's something to be thankful for. When you come to the Bible, you don't have to read too far to find great men and women of faith. You read about Abraham or of Samson, somebody like Daniel, people who, driven by the Spirit of God, did great things for the honor of God. Outside the Bible, we find great men and women of faith also. And today, we're going to discuss somebody who had great faith in God, such great faith that his otherwise unremarkable life became remarkable for the glory of God. So much so that this individual was one of the very few to receive a Congressional Medal of Honor. His name was Desmond Doss. And joining me today to discuss Desmond Doss is Pastor Les Spear, who for several years was Desmond Doss's church pastor. Les, thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, you've been in ministry pretty much all your adult life. How long now? 46 years. And you were the pastor of a church Desmond attended for how many of those years? About three and a half. But your association with Desmond predates those and postdates those years. So Correct. you knew him for about how many years? About 22, 23 years. And in those years, you can get to know a person pretty well. Yeah. We became personal friends. Um, sometimes your church members you get to know very well. And because of Desmond's reputation, because of his wonderful, quiet, humble manner, he's the kind of man that everyone wishes they had as a father or a grandfather. And uh, you could sit beside him and ask him questions. He wasn't intimidated. He wasn't full of himself. He was just as open and transparent as sunlight. Now, not that many people are awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Maybe you can explain what it was that Desmond did that uh, saw him receive the Congressional Medal of Honor from President Harry Truman. First of all, you have to understand that the background of his boot camp, Desmond was despised because he was a conscientious objector. He didn't like that term. He said, I'm a conscientious cooperator. But nevertheless, during his time in the military, where he served as a combat medic, he refused to carry a gun. Yes. Leading many of those he served with well, to hate him. Yes. So when it came to warfare, however, the ugly duckling turned out to be a beautiful person who would go after them, the wounded soldiers, no matter where they were, if they were in the line of fire, he would go after them, risking his own life many, 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 many times, grab them by the collar and drag them out. Here's how I understand it. Desmond said that during that uh, white hot, intense battle on the Maida Escarpment in Okinawa, Japan, he brought to safety under the most difficult circumstances imaginable 50 wounded men who otherwise would have lost their lives. The military says it was a hundred, yes. at least soldiers he served with. So they split the difference yes. and said Desmond Doss saved 75 men while under fire, uh, literally in the crosshairs of Japanese marksmen. Now, let me tell you something I asked Desmond about one day. I said, Desmond, after you saved two or three people and you lowered them down with the rope, about 40 feet to where the other men could get them and take them to aid station. I said, did you continue to crawl on the ground? He said, no. He said, after a while, I understood that God was protecting me, so I'd stood up and carried men on my back. I drugged them. I didn't try to stay on the ground anymore. And, he, and the other men who were down there said that the bullets were like bees flying around him, but they didn't touch him. So I said, Desmond, is this story about you? He said, no. 
This story is about my God that I serve. Describe Desmond Doss as a person, you've done that a little bit, something about his background and how he grew up as a man of faith. This was a committed Christian. He grew up in a very poor home. His mother and father um, were both of them part-time without regular jobs uh, during the Depression. His father was a very bad alcoholic, prone to beating the children. Uh, the mother was a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and the, the Bible and church was very important. Mr. Doss, Thomas Doss, uh, one day at an auction, he bought a little picture of the Lord's Prayer and of the Ten Commandments for 75 cents. And they hung that behind a chair. And interestingly, Desmond liked to stand in that chair and watch and look at and understand the Ten Commandments with the pictures that were there. And his mother said one day, Desmond, you're going to wear that chair out looking at that picture. She really didn't mind. But that picture had a tremendous influence on not killing anyone. The picture of Cain killing Abel and of the Seventh-day Sabbath. And those were two big monumental foundations that shaped his character. He chose to be a conscientious cooperator. As you said, he didn't like the term conscientious objector. Yes. But he, he volunteered for the military. Absolutely. Now, when you volunteer for the military, you don't get to dictate the terms under which you will serve. That's true today, but it was quite a, a little bit different back then during World War II. Uh, today, if a person volunteers, they go in as a combatant. They must carry arms unless it's convenient for them to not to do so. Uh, then there was a law that allowed them to not carry a gun, which he refused to do, and uh, still be on the battlefield, still be saving life instead of taking it. He didn't. He said, I'm willing to salute my flag. I'm willing to go in uniform. I believe in my country. I'm very patriotic. And he was one of the most patriotic people I've ever seen or met. But he would not kill. He would not take life. A man who would not take life, who would not carry a weapon, but was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. A remarkable man, a servant of his country, and a man of faith. More of the Desmond Doss story in just a moment. When you read the Bible, you read about many great heroes of the Bible, people otherwise ordinary who moved by the Spirit of God did great things for the glory of God. Outside of the Bible, we meet heroes as well. And Desmond Doss, though he would never refer to himself as such, was undoubtedly a modern day hero, a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient who went into battle with nothing more than a medical kit, a prayer on his lips, and a very small Bible just like this one. This was Desmond Doss's strength. I would like to share with you a little book called The Faith of Desmond Doss, which will share with you what it was that made Desmond Doss a great man of faith and how you too can have that kind of faith in God. To receive The Faith of Desmond Doss, please call right now 1-800-253 3000. That's 1-800-253-3000. If when you call the line is busy, please do call again. You can call 24 hours a day. If you'd like to write, please write to It Is Written P.O. Box 6, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. And we will send you a free copy if your address is within North America. Or go to our website for a free download, www.itiswritten.com. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. My guest today is Pastor Les Spear, who for several years was the pastor of Congressional Medal of Honor recipient Desmond Doss, and for many years was his close and trusted friend. Desmond Doss is the central figure in the movie Hacksaw Ridge, which focuses on one of the most intense military engagements in this country's history. Les, since the end of the Civil War, less than 2,000 individuals have received the Medal of Honor. Uh, in order to receive that award, you have had to have done something outstanding. And typically, 
in order to do something outstanding, you've had to be someone outstanding. Now, what sort of person was Desmond Doss, the man? Some people will be acquainted with the Myers-Briggs personality profile. Um, Desmond was an INFJ. And if you Google that, it comes out that it's Mr. Integrity. He would not violate his conscience. I don't know of a single instant where he violated his conscience in his whole lifetime. He was so rigid to do what he felt was right, regardless of the consequences. Which led him, while in the military, to make the decision that he wouldn't carry a gun. He would be a conscientious cooperator. You mentioned before that he was despised for that, at least for a while. That yeah. turned around. What kind of pressure did he uh, experience in the military for his decision? He was beat up. He wouldn't, was not allowed to have pass his home, even to get married earlier. The men would make fun of him. They would ridicule him. They uh, despising him because he wouldn't be like them and carry a gun and kill the enemy. As a spiritual man, you observed him up close. What was his spiritual experience like? He was a person who was not full of himself. He was very humble, very kind, very patient. He was willing to listen. Uh, another soldier met him, and the soldier said, Desmond treated me like I was the recipient of the Medal of Honor. He said, when Desmond goes to the Medal of Honor convention every other year, the other recipients line up to see him. Now, isn't that amazing? So it's not a story necessarily about Desmond. It's a story about the miracle working power of Desmond's God. Up on Hacksaw Ridge, or more appropriately referred to, up on the Maida Escarpment at Okinawa, he was literally in the crosshairs of uh, Japanese weapons and guns, bullets were flying past him, yet he distinguished himself uh, with immense bravery and, and absolute heroism, leading him to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, you have that medal here today. Might we see that? Yes. This is the Congressional Medal of Honor. There are very few people who wear this, believe me. I think there's only about 150 who are still alive at this time. In addition to the Congressional Medal of Honor, he was awarded with other awards. What were they? He received two bronze stars, the Oak Leaf Cluster for valor. He received three Purple Hearts and uh, was wounded most severely the last time after the Maida Escarpment. The Japanese had built tunnels in this mountain and they had pillboxes, they had machine gun nests set up, designed not to be on the offensive, but on the defensive. So my history books say that between 2,200 and 2,300 American lives were trying to take this mountain range. It wasn't so big, about 400 feet high, but they had designed it so that when they got there, many soldiers would die. At one place, there was a little creek Human blood was almost knee deep. So here you have Desmond going up there on the second famous day. And as he goes up there, the Japanese are shooting at him and he is going and rescuing men. But instead of crawling on the ground after realizing that God is protecting him, he doesn't worry about the bullets at all. And he just goes and gets people and puts them on his back. He sometimes will help them walk if they are capable of walking at all, carries them to the side and lowers them over 40 feet down where the other men can get them and take them to military aid. Just trusting in the Lord. And I asked him, what were you thinking? He said, I was praying, God, help me get one more before I die. Help me get one more. Help me get one more. Big, strong man, was he? No, he was probably 130 pounds at this time. 130 pounds, yet he single-handedly rescued and then lowered to safety at least 75 men while bullets were flying past. One of the other men in the unit said that the bullets up there were like a bunch of bees flying around him. What sort of long-term effects did Desmond Doss suffer after having served in the military? Something that we have in our vocabulary today is post-traumatic stress syndrome. 
Desmond suffered that for probably 10 or 12 years. He called it the demons. He would think of people that were, he considered them his men, and he would see them die. He would try to save them, and they would die or be blown up. This was going on in his mind. Yes. And so for years, this, all this trauma is going on in his mind. Today, we deal with psychologists and psychiatrists and so forth to help our soldiers in these situations. Desmond had none of that. Plus, after he got well from the injuries of his body and his left leg that was blown up with a hand grenade, he has TB for five and a half years, and he couldn't even be with his wife but for a few minutes a day, and he couldn't be with his son for fear that, that his son would get TB. This was a terrible psychological imprisonment almost during his life for years, probably 10 to 12 years he suffered these emotional problems. And then there was his hearing. Yes. When they treated him for his problems physically, antibiotics were new in World War II. The doctors didn't know how much to give, and so they gave him way too much and he would have ringing in his ears for years. And finally, sometime after World War II, he became totally deaf for 12 years until they have a new miracle surgery called cochlear implant. After he got the cochlear implant, it was possible to communicate with him. He said, but everybody talks like Donald Duck. <laughs> I found that if I lowered my voice, I could speak slowly, and if I faced him, he could read my lips, and we could carry on a good conversation. Did you ever know him to th consider or to suggest that the price he paid for serving his country was too high? Never. He said, I received the Congressional in honor of the men who died, because they gave a much greater sacrifice than mine. Quite a remarkable man. And now the subject of a major motion picture entitled Hacksaw Ridge. There's already been documentaries, books, and many other productions in honor or in respect of a man who gave so much for the country that he loved, motivated always by honor for God. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Every Word is a one-minute Bible-based daily devotional presented by Pastor John Bradshaw and designed especially for busy people like you. Look for Every Word on selected networks or watch it online every day on our website, itiswritten.com. Paul and Silas were doing God's business in Philippi. They were hounded for days by a demon-possessed woman. So they do the right thing, the God thing, and they cast the demon out of her. But as a result, they ended up in prison, their backs having been brutally opened up by a Roman whip and their feet put fast in stocks. And yet the testimony of God's word is that in their darkest hour, their faith in God was strong. Acts 16.25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Instead of complaining that God had abandoned them, they prayed and sang. The other prisoners were touched, God worked miracles, and the jail keeper was saved. When you're in a tough situation, instead of complaining, pray and praise God. That's when miracles happen. I'm John Bradshaw for It Is Written. Let's live today by every word. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. Today, we're discussing Desmond Doss, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, whose experience is portrayed in the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Pastor Les Spear, his pastor for several years, his friend for many years. We spoke a few moments ago about how Desmond Doss was hated, absolutely despised, because he chose to be a non-combatant. He said he was a conscientious cooperator. But in spite of that decision, later on was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. So something happened to turn around in the minds of many people. This concept of a man who was perhaps a coward couldn't be relied on to, in the minds of his own peers, he really became a hero in their minds. Explain that transition that took place. In basic training, one of the men said, in battle, I will kill you. When it came to the battle time, Later, that particular man who had threatened him in basic training 
was running the other way, away from the enemy, when Desmond was going into battle to save his men. And Desmond was not afraid to risk his life again and again and again, where if anyone was wounded and they cried for a medic, he was on his way. In spite of the harm and the foolishness, one time the commander said, Desmond, wait a little while. And Desmond said, he may not be alive in a little while. And he crawled on off to get that man and drag him back. Earlier, there was a complete lack of respect for Desmond and his faith. Later on, there was an immense amount of respect for his faith in God. Describe that for me. When they tried to get up the Meta Escarpment, Hacksaw Ridge as it's called by the men, they were climbed that ladder seven times and they were kicked off seven times. One of the times, Desmond said to the commander, Sir, shouldn't we have prayer before we go up? His intent was that every man should pray, forgive me my sins and make peace with God. So the commander called the men together and says, Desmond wants to pray for us. Well, that wasn't Desmond's thought, but that's what he did. And he prayed a very simple prayer. Lord, give our commander Good instructions help us to follow safety procedures so that we will all be able to return safely and alive. That day, everyone in their unit came back alive. Not Which a single one. A very rare occurrence. When the other group that was beside them were just mowed down, they were on a, a neighboring part of the escarpment. They were slaughtered almost. A remarkable story. Absolutely. What sort of legacy do you think he left behind? I happen to be the, not only a personal friend of his, but also his trust officer. Desmond understood the principle from Scripture that we are just stewards. We're not owners of anything. And so Desmond wanted everything that he had, except for a few personal items, uh, to build up God's kingdom. And so he left not only his money, but also his time, his, his commitment. Uh, he was eager to do everything he could to build up the work of Jesus Christ. I understand he invested with his own time and energy in young people. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about his work with young people. Well, he loved to go to high school, to private schools, to churches, synagogues, wherever he could find people, but especially he, he wanted to spend time with young people. And he would tell them that if they would trust in God, God would direct their paths. And Edmund said, that's true with me, and it'll be true with you if you commit your life to Jesus Christ. How did young people respond to this fellow? Let's keep in mind he was a frail, older, deaf man. Yes. And, and, and he could interact with high school kids. Oh, it was amazing. One time there was a group of perhaps 225 people, and almost all of them were young people. They sat there almost mesmerized. They were just awestruck. I was amazed. These were 10, 12, 13, 14 year olds. And they were just with their mouths hanging over, listening to the story of God's protection and providence for him. It really is a remarkable story. It's a, it's a story of, of protection, as you say, providence and faith and trust in God. Now, Desmond Doss today rests in a cemetery not very far from where we are sitting right now. And he's a man who was a significant part of your life. Just briefly, what kind of impact did Desmond Doss, the man, have on you? In any church, there are stresses, uh, sometimes squabblings, sometimes uh, jealousies. And Desmond was a person who frequently had his picture in the newspaper, uh, in the parades around town. And uh, there was some problems in the church and in the social structure of the community. And uh, Desmond struggled with that, but he was not going to let that influence him not to go to church, not to be faithful, not. He was always determined, no matter what others do, I will be faithful to God. And it's that faith that's so beautifully portrayed in the film Hacksaw Ridge, in the documentary, The Conscientious Objector, in books and so much that's been written and produced about this man. Pastor Les Spear, thanks for joining me today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Well, let's pray together before we go. Let's pray. 
Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for the way you place your hand on lives which then reveal to so many your goodness, your glory, your providence, and your power. As we consider the life and the legacy of Desmond Doss, we are mindful that your impact on a life can make any life profound, any life influential, any life tell for your glory. As we come to you with our struggles and weaknesses, I pray that your touch, your blessing, would see your will done. And though the great majority of us will never be known like Desmond Doss was known, I pray that in our sphere, our lives would give evidence that we have been touched and blessed by the God of heaven. Thank you that you are the God of great things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I would like to share with you a little book called The Faith of Desmond Doss, which will share with you what it was that made Desmond Doss a great man of faith and how you too can have that kind of faith in God. To receive The Faith of Desmond Doss, please call right now, 1-800-253-3000. If when you call the line is busy, please do call again. You can call 24 hours a day. If you'd like to write, please write to It Is Written, P.O. Box 6, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. And we will send you a free copy if your address is within North America. Or go to our website for a free download, www.itiswritten.com. And please remember that It Is Written is a faith-based ministry. We are enabled to share the gospel of Jesus Christ globally because of the support of people just like you. To support It Is Written, please do call 800-253-3000 or you can write to the address on your screen or visit us at itiswritten.com. Again, to receive The Faith of Desmond Doss, 1-800-253-3000. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.